Hi, I'm Stephanie, and this is my fiance, Thad, and we, we want to like welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we want to welcome you to Mission TV Live. All right, come on, let's try it again. You changed it. All right, we'll say it again. All right. <laughs> let's go. We want to welcome you, you to Mission, Mission TV. TV Live. Hi, I'm Natalie, and I have my husband John with me, and Stephanie and Thad, whom you just met, <laughs> and we have Kirk and Dee Dee Van Buren with us tonight. And our topic is a special one, especially for Stephanie and Thad, and that is brides and weddings. So we want to look a little bit at some of the parables that Jesus told, and look at some of the aspects of the wedding, preparation for the wedding, and the bride and different things. So um, I'm so glad you could join us tonight, and please feel free to call in. 423-413-7321 to email us at live at missiontv.com to send us on Facebook at Mission TV Live or on Twitter at Mission TV underscore com. Shall we talk first about where you just came back from? Yeah, sure. Where were you last week? Well, I was supposed to be gone from the live last week, but um, I you were on the live last week. By. I was here, and then so Tuesday I got up really early in the morning and I went to Las Vegas. I because I like that place. Like to no, gamble. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you like National Association of Broadcasters Convention. Yes, yes. Along because with they have all the technology, all the latest cameras. And yes, along with 98,000 other people. <laughs> 98,999 98, other people. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of other people went there because it's the, large, the world's largest broadcasting convention in the world. So everybody comes and brings their equipment or their whatever it is to show. You've got uh, probably, I, was, I don't know, I mean like 12 acres probably indoors of just stuff. Exhibits. you got Sony, Panasonic, all the big names, um, the little names. I mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of booths. And you can go there to get such an education. You know, instead of like surfing the web and calling and hoping you get somebody to talk to, you can go there and you can talk to the owners and the and the engineers and the sales, everybody. And you just learn one, you know, just, it's like a, a, it's a year's worth of education packed into just four days. And it was And you awesome. got two and a half of those. I got only two and a half, yeah. But <laughs> the first time I went was in, two, no, 1993. Two and a half, yeah. 1993. Wow. Yeah, and I've gone mm -hmm. about, I think this is like my 13th time. Wow. Because uh, I didn't go when I was working at 3ABN, but I would take my students from PUC every year because you get a sense of what's possible. And um, it's just really amazing what's there. And I saw some stuff that I really want to implement into Mission TV. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. do you want to tell us about it? Or? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, we got an hour? <laughs> no, <laughs> no we just have a few more minutes. But you know, God is making it so much easier than ever to get into to, to television to be able to broadcast that message at such an uh, affordable rate. Mm -hmm. um, the cameras that I really want are only like $2,000. Wow. Which, you know. That's like 3000 cheaper than the standard for a studio. Well, yeah, and that <laughs> standard for the studio that you're talking about, 5000 that's dirt cheap. That's still cheap. For broadcasting. Yeah. I mean, you could easily spend $70,000 on yeah. a body. Right. And then another $40,000 on a lens. Mm -hmm. And here we're talking about $2,000 for the camera, maybe $1,500 for the lens. And, um, and we can get more of those and have a more interesting kind of production. Mm -hmm. And more power, better look, uh, more dependable. I mean, all these things. And God is just saying, hey, you know, how much easier do I have to make it for mm -hmm. you? And the truth is we got thousands of languages still out there that have no... No, I mean, we've, it, p, the languages that have anything are, are just like a handful as far as broadcast. Mm -hmm. And so there's thousands of languages, and a lot of those languages don't even have a written language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met somebody at the ASI mm -hmm. convention this weekend, and she was telling me she works with her daughter in North India training Bible workers for mm -hmm. Nepal. Mm -hmm. And she said two of their students speak a language that there is no script mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. 
their primary language. Mm -hmm. And so they have no portion of the scripture mm -hmm. because there's no way to write anything mm -hmm. in their language. It's mm -hmm. only spoken. Mm -hmm. So she's like, media would just be, mm -hmm. you know, such a blessing. Of course, we have to get the media in their language. Yeah, right? but how it's a lot faster to just have them speak than to, than to, to create a script create, right. and then, yeah. Right. Yeah, and they got those so. little God pods, they call them, that have a solar panel on one side and they just, you just program them with like the Bible in their language mm -hmm. and then they just, it just goes and goes and it, if it runs out of battery, you just charge it with the sun. Oh, cool. And then they can just wow. listen to it and pass it along and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the gospel gets into their mm -hmm. culture. That That's way. really neat. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that are possible there. It was just really um, neat um, to, uh, to see what's possible and to see how, like last year, you were looking at, you know, just a lot more money mm -hmm. just to do what you can do. And the cameras that we have here, um, they're not quite there as far as quality goes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really hard to match. We have camera... Camera two here is looks a little bit different. You can between camera one. So if you want to like, mm -hmm. there's camera one, and there's camera two. Do you see that difference? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you guys yeah, yeah. that are watching. <laughs> you've <laughs> see seen it because you've seen it on, on yeah, the recording. You know. I mean, there's yeah. nothing we can do to make those cameras match, and um, it's the quality level. You know, people are expecting a higher quality these days. I mean, you go, go down to a theater and you watch a movie, you know, put 150, 250, 300 million dollars into an hour and a half program. And the quality level is what is going to be able to um, get into more doors, get the mm -hmm. message into more doors, into more people's minds. And so, yeah. anyway, that's our dream. We're uh, um, wanting to raise about $50,000 to redo the whole studio, all the equipment mm -hmm. and all the studio. And, and that's, you know, that's just replacing stuff like our server we bought off of eBay mm -hmm. back in 2009, which, and it was already four years old at that time. So it's a 2005 model that we're using, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're doing this. We're totally committed. So even if we, the funds don't come in to buy this extra stuff, we're still going to do it. But how much better and how much more trouble-free will it be if mm -hmm. we could update to the newest technology? Like, trouble-free, that would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to, to point out to our viewers, I mean, it's probably already clear, but that we're not wanting to be extravagant either. No. You know, like these films, we're, we're not wanting to spend all that money, but mm -hmm. in today's society, there is a standard of quality that people are used to, and there's mm -hmm. so many things competing for our attention. Mm -hmm. And if people see a poor quality video, they're probably just not going to watch it. Right. Exactly. So we're just wanting to be able to compete with everything else. Right. And right now our play out is uh, standard definition. Mm -hmm. we, we want to bring that up to HD this year, mm -hmm. to high definition this year, mm -hmm. so that the Roku viewers can have a better experience um, and the people that are watching it on the web can have a better mm -hmm. experience. And while I was there, it was, I mean, I was I actually was shaking a little bit because I went and <laughs> talked to RRSAT. And RRSAT, they're the ones that you send the link to the, the stream to over IP, over the internet, mm. and then they upload it to the, to the satellite. They send it up to the satellite. And for $13,000 a month, we could be up on satellite next to 3ABN, LLBN, Hope Channel, who else? Uh, amazing think, discoveries yeah. and amazing facts. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Because the, the purpose of this channel is, I mean, the target audience is mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists in North America. And for 13000 a month, we can be up there. And I talked to him, and he's a really nice guy, willing to do it. The door is there. It's open. Mm -hmm. and, and our channel is set up just to plug right into that, into that service. And we could be, you know, without. And the reason for this whole channel is to call more people into missions, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's themselves going, which is our first choice, because there's so few missionaries out there. You know, there's 6,000 unreached languages. Mm -hmm. But in a country, I mean, in a church of 17 million people, 6,000 is not that big of a number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you do that um, and, and, um, and, just, and, and call people into supporting missions, because the support mm -hmm. is just year by year going down at least 2 to 5% per year mm -hmm. dropping. And so people on the front lines are just really really dying. So anyway, so that's what I saw. That was my, that's my report. I didn't do any gambling. No, no, I'm sure you did. I did a little gambling. Yeah, Is on your flight? I flew, <laughs> I flew fly standby. standby. <laughs> 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 
Uh, I thought you did a little gambling with taxi cabs and luggage as oh. well. Oh, well, yeah. That, yeah. That, he lost that gamble. Yeah, I lost that so one. Left the luggage Sorry. in so the trunk of the taxi. you never got your suitcase back. Nope. Oh. Bye-bye suitcase. Aww. I had all my important stuff in my backpack, so. That's good. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah. And this weekend we went to um, the OCI Southern no, Union. No, ASI Southern Union. That's right, ASI. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Kohata, which is where last time we went to an OCI right. meeting. So uh, that's why you were confused. And we met an amazing family. Oh, yeah. We got there. Sabbath, we missed, we missed the church service because we had to pick him up in Knoxville Sabbath morning. So we were watching the live stream on our way in. And we got there just as the sermon finished. It was like, oh. But anyway, at least we got to watch the live stream. But, um, yeah, we got there, and we were walking in to find them at the booth, and uh, these little kids go, I've seen you on TV. They're so cute. And then they came to us at the booth, can we have our picture with you? And it's like, oh, of course. But, you know, so their family, we talked to their parents later, and they love watching Mission that TV. They sweet. love the stories of missionaries. They want to know where to get the mission story books, you know, mm -hmm. all this. They were just so excited. And, and uh, so I just pray, you know, John was asking one of the kids, so what do you want to be when you, get up, when you grow up? I want to be a missionary. That's so <laughs> awesome. So that was really neat. And we that talked really to the, the parents for quite a while because they were just so encouraging they just says you know keep doing what you're doing you know you don't, don't get discouraged yeah mm -hmm. you, you don't know how many people are being blessed by your ministry because we're my family's being so blessed by your ministry we have it on all the time and it's such a blessing and we don't allow any other television in our home at all just mm -hmm. mission tv and our kids love it and they just watch it and we love it and we, it's just very encouraging and it's done a lot in their lives, in their Christian walk. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I mean, I just soaking it up because, um, you know, sometimes it's a little bit lonely here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to get that kind of feedback, you know, if one, if just one mm -hmm. ends up in heaven mm -hmm. because of this channel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it'll make it all worthwhile. Mm -hmm. That's payment. I mean, Christ yeah. would have emptied all of heaven for just one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not quite emptying all of heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they live it. just down the road, so they're going to come and visit okay, one of these cool. days. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Come on a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do a show, special show just with them. Well, let's go ahead and get to mm. our topic now. We're Absolutely. quite a ways into our hour. But I want to first start with Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So we want to start out talking to Stephanie and Thad about your upcoming next Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What, Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sunday. Something's happening on Sunday. Yeah. You want to follow them? <laughs> Apparently, I'm getting married on Sunday. <laughs> Apparently, okay. Wow. I'm glad someone clued you in. <laughs> As I remember, That's why I didn't you were feel so you were stressed. <laughs> <laughs> you were planning the whole um, get married thing yourself before. <laughs> I planned the engagement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the wedding follows that. You know? Eventually. <laughs> so, uh, planning a wedding has mm -hmm. it? Have you discovered that there are a lot of details to that? Oh yeah, there's a there's a lot more details than than I think we realized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's taken a lot more. It's not time as simple as effort. every time we visit with her parents or my parents, they're like, oh, have you done this? <laughs> and like, you're like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to get married. I think, just, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of things that we just wouldn't have done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently, we're supposed to do them. <laughs> and her wedding dress has not come yet. Yeah, it still hasn't, it even hasn't been shipped. Come. Is that important? I think so. yeah. and that's the most important part. You're going like, to get married anyway, right? I mean, huh? Yeah. She could show up in jeans and a t-shirt. You'd still marry her, right? Of course. So what's the point of the wedding dress? It's the, it's the moment. It's that once in a lifetime thing that she'll never, never have to wear a dress like that again. 
Yeah, it's my one opportunity because, you know, we're going to be married forever. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Well, I think the, the groom also appreciates the, the, the bride dressing up like that. And, you know, we have that portrayal in the Bible. You know, uh, the groom, which is Jesus, mm -hmm. is coming to get his lovely bride. And mm -hmm. she is going to be adorned. And of course, the adornment is different in the Bible, but mm -hmm. I think the husband, the groom appreciates mm -hmm. uh, the beauty of the bride coming down the aisle. Mm -hmm. You know, when everybody <gasps> gasps and, you know, the, the groom has uh, a lot of trouble. You know, he usually has a lump in his throat. I remember having quite a lump in my throat <laughs> as I beheld my bride coming down the aisle. <laughs> So even though it's something that, you know, the, the bride wants to do, she's excited about doing that, I think it's a mutual appreciation. Yeah. I hope yeah, so. Somebody told me that you're never as beautiful as you are on your wedding day. And I think that's because of the joy and the, mm, yeah. you know, all of that. Mm. I don't know. You're more beautiful now, I think, than you were six years ago when we got married. Six years. <laughs> <laughs> You're sweet, dear. <laughs> we have a 14-year-old. Oh. Okay. And we waited a few years before we had him. Like eight. <laughs> eight, yeah. <laughs> so with all this work, this hard work about getting married and stuff, you seem still kind of like enthusiastic about it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's because we're going to Jamaica for our honeymoon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> we don't even have to go, you guys. <laughs> yeah. I should tell them what you told me today. What did I tell you? About the apartment. I don't remember. <laughs> Am I in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just payback. No. <laughs> On live TV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, we, so we, we just got... we. God really blessed and we found a really nice place to live that was actually cheaper than some other places we've been looking at. And um, we could have stayed where he has been living, but I just wasn't excited about that place to live. Um, I just, you know, like I was totally, of course, willing to, to live there because I want to marry him, but I just wasn't excited about living there. And so today, he was just like, wow. He was like, for a while, I was wondering if you even really wanted to marry me. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> because I was, you know, I just wasn't You were so non-excited about living where he was living. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but Very non-excited. <laughs> <laughs> so typical It would be obvious if, if Stephanie was not excited. I, about lived, I lived in, a, in the quintessential, it was a cave. It was a man cave. Yeah. I lived in Darn the man cave. <laughs> like it even grew mold in the summertime. Oh, cool. I didn't think it was good. A basement apartment? Yeah. Yeah, well, you his would, landlords you wouldn't are super nice, but like I just wasn't excited about the apartment. Dad? You wouldn't have survived very well. No. Your no. life may change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already started decorating. I'm like... Yeah, yeah she's going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the neat thing, too, about getting your a new place together is it's a new place for both of you. So right. you're starting mm -hmm. out fresh and you're going to have a place all your own that you two can decorate the way both of you like it. Yeah. Or I feel like Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that'll be yeah. really neat. Have mm -hmm. a new place of your own. Yeah. 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 He's really good though. He's like he's like it doesn't matter. The house is your domain. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Until it's it on comes. live TV. I'm now. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Until, <laughs> until it comes to take another trash. Yeah. Yeah. Fixing the bulbs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure so. if he had an opinion and he expressed it, you would take that into consideration. Oh, of course, though. of course. <laughs> like the flowers. But, but, right, right. Okay, so we got this canopy bed, like I've probably mentioned to you guys. But um, I um, found this amazing, okay, so I have like a teal scarf kind of wrapped around it. And I have teal and silver pillows on the bed. And I found this awesome painting. Um, <laughs> like a wall thing and it has teal flowers and some silver sparkly stuff on it and it just matches perfect and it was only like 12 bucks nice. so anyway it goes right above the bed fits perfectly so my mom and i were there working on the house and then he came and so i showed it to him and and uh oh um 
he was excited about how much I liked it. <laughs> and then, and then I had these white roses, fake. And I was like, hey, babe, look, I can put these like in the scarf, like around the bed post and everything. And he's like, he's like, we can do that on special occasions. <laughs> but, but he was like, but, but the day after we get back from our honeymoon would count as a special <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. So I was happy, yeah. <laughs> so are you going on the honeymoon right after the wedding? Yeah, we're or? not going to actually get to stay there after the wedding because um, our cruise leaves the very next day and it's in Florida. So we have to like get down there as quick as we straight. can. Right, so after the wedding, the wedding starts at 7.30 and then... In the evening. Yeah, and so the reception won't be till like probably 8 or 8.30. And then after that, we're going to drive to Atlanta to... Because our plane leaves in the morning, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did a lot. I mean, that's a lot of work to get ready for a wedding. Oh, yeah. Well, and the thing is, all oh, Sunday, true. we're having, like, a rehearsal on Sunday morning. Everything on Sunday is going to be really Yeah, big. pictures, yeah. rehearsal, everything, yeah. all of this. You guys will be on the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Well, and the crazy part of the preparation that you have to make, it's for like a two hour. It's amazing the amount of That's true. the, the oh. preparation that goes into a two hour event. Mm. Yeah. And it's it's gone like yeah. like mm -hmm. that and then it's done. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and true. you know, my groomsmen, they're in California, they're all spending six, seven hundred thousand dollars to get out for the wedding mm. and stuff like that. All, you know, the, just the huge amounts of money they get spent and different yeah. stuff. And then it's over. Yeah. One yeah. guy, he wow. had to keep changing his flight and so because of his job. Uh -huh. And so he's spending probably over and a They charge the change fee each time. Mm. And three, he had to change it three times. Uh, wow. yeah. I remember a lot of little things that had to be done right at the end, like the mm. cake topper and the cake yeah. cutters. and stuff that I would have forgotten yeah. if it weren't for going through a magazine and, oh, I'm going to need one of yeah, those. Yeah, exactly. We were long distance, so Kirk and I were two hours apart mm -hmm. trying to get this together, only seeing each other on weekends for our, you know, getting our wedding together. But just so many little things. Are you finding that too, all the... the I think fortunately other people are thinking of them for us. <laughs> all of our relatives. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm, there's probably still other things we have to do, and I'm not thinking about it. So you guys are, you seem still enthusiastic in spite of all the work that you have to oh, put yeah. into this thing. So, you know, I think that that can be an application to us also mm -hmm. as Christians, waiting for the Lord as a bridegroom readying herself for the wedding, uh, to be a part of, part of his wedding about the enthusiasm that's there. And I think that's something that we tend to miss out on as Christians, as you know, we're, we hear that we need to take the gospel to the whole world and we're like, oh, it sounds like so much work. And we forget about the enthusiasm that we have towards Christ mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and marrying Christ. And mm -hmm. you know, if we and think about- And that he has toward us. That's true. Yeah, and, the, and, 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 and when we take the gospel to the world, we're not just doing that work, but we're hastening the coming of Christ. Mrs. White says that you can hasten the coming of Christ by taking the gospel to the world. Mm -hmm. And that should make us fired up with enthusiasm. I, um, I was in a Bible study once, and that Bible study, the point of it is when you give a Bible study, you should be enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, you know, that's mm -hmm. true. I mean, think of who we're marrying. Mm -hmm. Think of who... We're studying about. Think about who we're... Yeah, think of who associating with. is calling us into adoption. I mean, adoption, marriage, thy maker is thy husband. I have adopted you and all these, you know, I call you sons friends. Sons and daughters. I don't call you servants, I call you friends. Mm -hmm. And sons and daughters, I call them father. There's so many different angles on the relationship, mm -hmm. but that enthusiasm about who, I mean, Christ is actually more strong than Thad. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank the and Lord wealthier. for that, right? <laughs> and wealthier, yeah. And wealthier, definitely. <laughs> and a better apartment. <laughs> it's better. A better part of town. <laughs> yeah, a better part of the universe. Total different town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing that's very different about the wedding we're preparing for and the bride that's being prepared mm. is we want to enlarge the bride. Mm. That's why we are supposed to be doing our Father's business, mm. which is letting our light so shine before men mm -hmm. to win more people mm -hmm. into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
so the bride will be larger. Right. That's when larger is better. You mean the wedding? The, well, the bride. You, you want a big bride? Well, in this case, a big bride is good. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger, the better. <laughs> Maybe we need to define the bride before we talk about fat women. <laughs> <laughs> she, might, she might break the seams in her dress. <laughs> That's fine. I mean... Maybe she'd fill out the dress. Yeah. Like yeah. Otto Koning used to say. He says, um, you know, Christ isn't coming back for a bride that's not all there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the bride, the final bride, is going to be made up of every nation, kindred, mm -hmm. tongue, and people. Mm -hmm. And if she's missing an arm or missing mm -hmm. a leg or miss, missing, you know, a spleen or something like that. She's miss, missing someone from such and such a tribe yeah. mm -hmm. or such and yeah. such a language. Yeah. Every gospel nation. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and when that bride is put together, then Christ can come. Mm -hmm. So he's, that's, sound, that's exciting. I mean, that's mm -hmm. totally exciting when you mm -hmm. think about that what we could do could make that day come sooner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means suffering would be at an end sooner. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking last week as I was traveling to Las Vegas, thinking about what an awesome place it's going to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, where our, uh, this, there's a statement that says, the more we know of God throughout eternity, the more intense will be our happiness. Huh. Mm -hmm. And it's like thinking about being in a place where you can fly, where there's no pain, there's no suffering. You have that intense joy of fellowship with one another and God the Father mm -hmm. and Jesus mm -hmm. Christ who died mm -hmm. for us. So imagine looking into his eyes, this mm -hmm. guy that died for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this God that in the Old Testament says that I will, I will increase your joy. I'll put my whole heart, soul, and mind into your happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, then, and then thinking, you know, the greatest understatement of the millennia is, and he, and he shall wipe away every tear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like that's such an mm -hmm. understatement. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's not only wiping, removing the sorrow, it's going to be just adding all that joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All that joy. So that kind of marriage... Mm -hmm. It's something to be, get excited about. And to think we can make a difference to his joy level mm. and that we can mm. diminish his sorrow yeah. through winning others to wow. Christ. Wow. Mm -hmm. you so, know, I was, yeah. go yeah. ahead. No, oh, I was just going to say, um, during your <laughs> courtship, I mean, like, you guys got engaged. You guys still spend time together? A lot of time. <laughs> why, why? I mean, you're already going to get married. <laughs> There's still lots to find out. Oh, really? Hmm. So Christ is betrothed. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make an application. Paul, <laughs> 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 you're like, you're we're like not asking a. for details. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Christ, Christ is, we, he's betrothed his church. The, mar the marriage hasn't consummated, but he's betrothed the church. And during that time, you're learning about him. He's learning about you. So there's that knowledge thing. Now, do you avoid him at his work, or do you get to know his work? And <laughs> the only time we avoided him was, um, well, before we started dating. And when everybody told you he, you should get to know him? No, no. When he proposed, started we, his proposal, I he forbid her. me for, from going to his workplace. And that was really easy. You no, it was like, hard. I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you were hungry. <laughs> he works in the deli. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I really missed him. Like, like during our proposal, like the. Well, you I, need to explain because it's like some people. The proposal's like exactly he's on his true. knee. He says two sentences. She says yes, right, and that's right. it. Right. <laughs> right. No. So you need to explain. Yeah, the <laughs> proposal um, was quite dramatic and long it started on a wednesday mm -hmm. and ended on a saturday night yeah. and so like i was like on this quest Three, four, finding that's like four days clues yeah and so i hadn't seen him since i think that tuesday and that's actually the longest we've ever gone without directly communicating with each other so it it definitely accomplished his goal i think of building up anticipation and mm -hmm. like because when he finally proposed, I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, are you kidding? I've been wanting to say yes for days. <laughs> so I can't help but wonder, you had a four-day engagement. How many days long is the wedding going to be? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's two hours. No. Hmm. Four days, two hours. Okay. I thought it might be eight days. Oh, my. No, no. <laughs> now, in the ancient world, 
the weddings would go on for days, would yeah, they, they not? Have feasts. Oh, wow. A wedding feast. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So just make sure you have enough grape juice for all of us oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> to cover all those days. We'll have sushi. That's even better. Mm. <laughs> sushi for days. <laughs> we might. <laughs> it depends on how many people come. <laughs> oh. I love sushi. But I mean, that's, that's, that's really fitting because I think a lot of times we forget about the fact that you know, uh, being with Christ and being a Christian is like a marriage. Yeah. It's like a marriage relationship. Yeah, that's true. And we're just getting to know God, and there's that getting to know each other. That, um, and I think a lot of times we kind of start taking each other for granted, and that's kind of the bane of the relationship. I mean, mm-hmm. if you, you know, five years from now, if he just goes to work and and it doesn't bother to, he just starts taking you for granted. You doing what you're supposed to do, and mm-hmm. he's doing what he's supposed to do, and. You kind of your love kind of wanes, doesn't it? The joy goes out of the relationship. I read something in um, Ellen White's uh, letters for young lovers, and uh, she says, and I've heard this lots, um, and it's amazing that a lot of people don't take this advice. But mm. courtship lasts a lifetime. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you you should court her. <laughs> the man should court his bride. Every, the whole time, yeah. Yeah. even after they're married, continue that courtship mm-hmm. because right. it keeps the, the fire strong. Yes, yes. Now, you said this on <laughs> national television, so. Live TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's on record. record. People yes. are watching, <laughs> and it will be edited, and people will continue to watch. So. And you can also have a copy to replay if you need to remind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she'll be like, can I have a copy of that? I forgot today. Like, one day? Uh, I'll walk into the house one day, and it'll be playing. <laughs> yeah. Courtship lasts a lifetime. <laughs> on a loop. She'll cut oh, it yeah. out, and it'll just loop that one section. Over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Bad thing about marrying a video editor. <laughs> they can do stuff like that. That's true. I don't think I'll need to. No, probably not. But it does go both ways. But oh, that's, yeah. But that's important. I think that's something that, that um, is really important in the Christian relationship also. I know Christ has mm. told me that, you know, this is a marriage. It's not a contract. Uh-huh. You know, and a lot of times I think we're mm-hmm. Christians and we try to do all the right things so that we can get to heaven, not remembering, and we for, we lose we lose a sense of the relationship. But also, you know, he's a, you're marrying a working man, so you get to know his what's his what's his. I mean, that's one of the first things you told me about him was his career, mm-hmm. what he's doing for work right now, anyway. Yeah, and you know, Christ is a working man. You know, what, what kind of work does he do? What, where, what is his specialty? What is his career goals? What is the goals in his profession? Saving pe- more people. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, he rolls up his hands. I, there was a time when I was in his Bangkok. Sleeves. He rolls up his sleeves. That's better. Than <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time I was in Bangkok and, and, and I was out and it was evening and I didn't have a very good prayer time in the morning and I was kind of feeling lonely. And cities are acid baths to my faith, you know, mm-hmm. because I see all these high rise buildings and the cars and everything. And, and I was just kind of feeling like mm-hmm. God Las was Vegas. distant from me. Yeah. <laughs> God was distant from me and I needed to go back to my apartment and get my Bible and I need to curl up and pray and get God closer to me. And then I started thinking, wait a minute, God pursued me before I pursued him. Mm-hmm. So if he's pursued me and he's omnipotent, he's everywhere, that means that God is here. And it's like all of a sudden, it's like his Holy Spirit showed up. You know, God can give you that sense of his presence. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't have the sense, he's still there because he's so close he can hear your thoughts. Mm-hmm. But he, gives, he gave me that feeling like, like, you know, I'm here. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow. And my first reaction is like, what are you doing here? <laughs> this part of town. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, you know, I'm where the need is greatest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so if we want to get closer to Christ, we need to go where he spends most of his time. And that's mm-hmm. where the need is greatest. Mm-hmm. With, the, with the kids that are starving to death. Mm-hmm. You know, there's mm-hmm. 16,000 kids starving of m- malnutrition every single day. Dying mm-hmm. of malnutrition. Yeah, that too. And, you know, it's like, where are they? Mm. I don't, I mean, I have an idea geographically where they are, but I haven't gone yet to find, I've never seen a child die of starvation, but 16,000 mm. a day mm. are dying of that. It's like, I have a feeling that's where Christ is. Mm. And if we made a difference there, 
he'd like it. Because mm -hmm. he feels, you know, when they get hungry, he feels their mm -hmm. hunger. Mm -hmm. And when they die, he feels that, that's, that loss, that sorrow. Yeah, it, it reminds me of, of what, you know, I did some reading in the scriptures about brides and weddings and mm -hmm. the wedding feast and the parables, you know. And there are so many aspects to it. And yet, over and over again, Christ mm -hmm. is bringing out his love for the people, his mm -hmm. longing for the people mm -hmm. to be a part of the bride mm -hmm. that's coming. And I read a text or a quote, I wanted to share this in um, Desire of Ages, and it's chapter 14, beginning page 151. In both the Old and New Testament, the marriage relationship is employed to represent the tender and sacred union that exists between Christ and his people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the mind of Jesus, the gladness of the wedding festivities pointed forward to the rejoicing of that day when he shall bring home his bride to the Father's house mm -hmm. and the redeemed with, with the Redeemer shall sit down to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then she's got uh, some of the quotes from the scriptures. And then in the next verse, in the next paragraph, it says, Jesus saw in every soul one to whom must be given the call to his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He reached the hearts of the people by going among them as one who desired their good. Mm -hmm. He sought them in the public streets, in private houses, on boats, in synagogues, in the shores of the lake, and at the marriage feast. He met mm -hmm. them at their daily vocation and manif man manifested an interest in their secular affairs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it goes on. It's just beautiful to, talking about how he reached different people. But I just love that. Jesus saw in every soul one to whom must be given the call to his mm. kingdom. Mm. Mm. And that's what I think of when I think about the children that are dying. Yeah. Mm. They have a right to, to hear the call. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. Mm. It's a basic human right mm. to hear the call. To the wedding feast. Yes, yes. So that's something that, I mean, that's exciting. That, that I mean, you can, that's where Christ is. And, and I think instead of seeing the mission work as a burden, because so many times when I talk about this mission work that needs to be done, people, you see the look in their eyes like, oh, I got to do that work. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, we got to get all that done. Oh, there's that many languages he's still got to do? It's like, well, maybe we should look at it a different way of saying, we're going to get married. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. And this is where my husband is. There. And that's where his heart is. I want to find, I want to get to know more about him. Mm -hmm. And in going out to, the, to where he is, we learn more about him. And the joy just grows and grows and grows and grows. And for me, a greater motivator is I want to help put an end to his suffering. Yeah. His suffering. You know, we often just think of it in terms of our suffering mm -hmm. or the suffering of those children, mm -hmm. which, of course, we want to end as well. Yeah. But his suffering is that much greater. Right. Much greater. We can't even wrap our mind around that because mm -hmm. he feels the pain of every yeah. human being that is suffering. He's feeling, I mean, there's, I don't know how many children have died since we started this yeah. show. Mm -hmm. And he's feeling every single one mm -hmm. of their pain. Mm -hmm. And that just makes me sad. Mm -hmm. And it should. <laughs> and it should. So I want to do something about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And get more people doing something about mm -hmm. it. Because, you know, one guy isn't going to be able to do all that. But, man, if we can just do one, mm -hmm. think of that. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. So then the wedding thing, I mean, it's an exciting thing. It's a relationship. It's not like a contract. You do this and I'll do that. It's, it's a relationship. But you, when, when you guys are married... He's going to like be concerned about all the details in your life, the big things and the little things. I mean, if you have a problem, he's going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the same problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, like if you come home crying because of something somebody said, he's going to have concern about that person, mm -hmm. you know, and he's going to want to do something about it. Guys are fixers, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> We're designed that way. We want to fix stuff, and sometimes that drives you nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's who we're, you know. Our, thy maker is thy husband, and so we have that same kind of relationship. That when we're when we're married to Christ, then the things that bother us bother Him, hmm. and so that we can rely on Him to deal with some of those those issues. I can't help. 
but also think of the scripture that says, he who has been forgiven much loves much. Mm. And I think of the relationship Christ has with us. I mean, he knows everything about us, the good, the bad, the ugly. Well, it's mostly ugly, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. mm. But that he still hangs in with us. Mm. He's just ever faithful, ever Mm. He's always there. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Mm. Mm. And if he can be that way for us, how mm. much more we need to be that way for him yeah. and for his lost kids. Right. Oh, absolutely. I wanted to go back for a minute to the wedding garment because yeah. in the text that I read at the beginning, it said, he hath clothed thee with, with the garment of salvation, mm. with the robe of righteousness. Mm. So how do we get the wedding garment? It is there for the asking. And we cannot get into the wedding with garments other than the robe of Christ's righteousness. Okay. And that robe has not one thread of human devising, not one thread. We of ourselves have not one shred of righteousness. Okay. So it is a by faith. And by faith we enter into the relationship and by faith we enter into his works. Uh -huh. Faith that works by love. So it's not just a covering. It's not just a covering, no. There's action to it. So you're speaking kind of in uh, symbolic terms. I suppose. What does that actually, how does that actually, what does that look like? How does that actually work? Well, you know, I guess I can only say from my personal experience, you know, when Christ came into my life and made his love manifest mm -hmm. and forgave me and gave me a fresh new start, a clean slate, and he gives me that every day, how can you not have a response to that? Mm. And that response is, I love you, Lord. I want to do anything I can to, f to follow you, to please you. Mm. And to please him is to follow in the footsteps. Mm. Jesus came and gave us an example. Mm. You know, mm. that's what following his footsteps means, mm -hmm. to do his Father's will. Which brings me to an interesting point. Are you interested in pleasing her? Mm. You are? That's works, man. <laughs> <laughs> you have a legalistic marriage. <laughs> and you're not even married yet. <laughs> Do you have an answer for me? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's reciprocal. Mm -hmm. um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm. Without faith, works are dead. So there's this, there's this faith that because of my works, that the love will be returned to me. Mm. And with God, with Jesus, the love is always returned. Mm. And it's always there. And so we have to just reciprocate love to others because mm. he already loved us. And mm. so I do things for her to please her because I love her and with the with the faith that because she loves me, she will reciprocate those things that I enjoy that please me. So even after you've won her love, it's obvious that you've won her love. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have to work anymore, man. You can just relax. You can lose her love. Oh. We can't lose God's love. Can't so we lose. could lose the relationship. Yeah, yeah. You can grieve away the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. So he'll never leave us, but we can leave him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be enough to just, you know, for me to uh, tell my wife I love her, but not have any demonstration in my words or actions towards her. So you have a workspace marriage also? I, I guess I do. <laughs> Sorry. And you here? I don't do anything to please you. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. You finally figured it out. No. <laughs> but it is kind of crazy that you're bringing that up, that we have a tendency to think with God, if we show God a response of love mm. in action and works, mm. that we're legalists. Mm. But if we do it for our wife or our husband, mm. Well, we better. That's yeah. just normal. Yeah. yeah it's mm. expected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how come God gets that short, short end of that stick? Absolutely. Short it's so sad yeah. that he has mm -hmm. to even, you know, have um, rules that say, please don't kill anyone today. 
please don't <laughs> steal in, steal from anyone today. It's really sad, actually, that he has to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's longing for the day when his law and his character will be written in the but, tablets of her heart. But I mean, if you if you married him and he never offended you, and that's all he never did. But if he, if he never like did things that made you happy, but he just never offended you. <laughs> Would you have loved him as much as you do? No. <laughs> so it's like, you know, the It's almost like I'd rather him offend me, but still love me ah. actively. Wow. That's powerful. That, I mean, that just told me something. I mean, like, God would rather us even offend him, but still have that relationship mm -hmm. with him wow. than to just be like, okay, I don't, not to be really actively with our heart. Mm. loving or following him. It's like, you know, the Ten Commandments that like takes away all the negative behavior, but God wants a positive, mm -hmm. active, strong love mm -hmm. that actively searches and does stuff. Mm. Like somebody told me a long time ago, and I totally believe it, it says God's not interested in nice Christians, more he'd rather have honest Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, honest people that would sit down and say, God, I don't feel like talking to you today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or why did you do this? Because mm -hmm. then he can say, well, here's why. Mm -hmm. Or he can say, yeah, I know you don't feel like talking to me. Let me shine a little bit of sun on you mm -hmm. so you can feel like, you know. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. come on, Jonah. <laughs> think about the worm. You know, <laughs> yeah. God deals with us where we're at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we've developed a whole uh, generation of nice Christians that go to church and sit in church. Or we study our Bible or we don't even go to church. And, and, and we just try to be nice. And we think that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. It's not what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants that passion that Thad has towards you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think mm -hmm. that's what he's looking for, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. be zealous. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> God stands up and says, be zealous. Be excited. Be on fire. <laughs> you know, do something. And we're, and we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't give back to him. You right. know what he's longing for. Because I think we're not valuing who he is. Like she's valuing him, and he's valuing her. Mm -hmm. You know, they've, they're seeing the value in each other. And I think we don't value Christ because mm -hmm. we got we got blinders mm -hmm. on. In our humanity, it's so easy to forget. It's so easy to, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. to start taking for granted. Mm -hmm. And that's why one of my long-standing prayers for years as being God, please, may I never take you for granted. Mm. You know, that's the worst one to ever take for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, and then mm -hmm. I think of the lyrics in one of our favorite hymns, and I just think it's so beautiful, with unnumbered blessings each moment he crowns, mm. mm -hmm. that don't even get acknowledged yeah. by most of us. Yeah. Mm. You yeah. know, every heartbeat that we have, every breath we take, yeah. every day we have is a gift. Yeah. from Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything good we have is from Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys have enjoyed your courting, mm -hmm. you enjoyed your, have you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard from her. <laughs> 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 and now you're looking forward to being married. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And then uh, looking forward to a big family. <laughs> We'll start with one and we'll see how it goes. They, they, he's getting her family mm -hmm. and she's getting his family. Mm. So they'll have a big family. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start out with a she dog. She has a bigger family. Oh, really? Yeah, I guess they do. <laughs> well, I remember when Deidre and I got married, you know, and someone said, oh, now, now you're a family. And, and we thought, we're a family? But we looked it up and yes, it, you don't... <laughs> You don't we, have to have children, yeah, right? We, we found out you can be a family without children. So yeah. when you guys get married, you will be a family. Amen. Amen. And that was a surprise to me to find that out. A complete unit. Yeah. 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 yeah so shame on you for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be the mother's job. Not, to bring not up your the family job. thing. Oh. The kid yeah, thing. Yeah, like their mothers are supposed to start going, okay, <laughs> when are we going to have grandbabies? <laughs> Remember when we went to India and those people were praying for seven kids for us? I know. I was like, oh, will you no, stop? No. <laughs> God better not answer that prayer because I'm praying a different one. <laughs> <laughs> so we started out with a dog. Yeah. Did you yeah. want to have children at all in the beginning? 
In the beginning, we, we, when we first got married, we'd say, we're going to wait four years and then talk about it. Okay. So we waited four years, talked about it, decided to wait another four years. Wow. And after that eight years, we'd like, okay, yeah. And like nine months later, <laughs> James. James popped out yeah. somehow. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> he was slippery. That's how he walked. <laughs> uh, yeah, if got, you were watching I, right now, he'd be so embarrassed. I got, I got, I got to, I got he just to turned deliver. 14 on Sabbath. Wow. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 14 yeah. in two days. So I can tell you, though, that after being married 20 years, mm -hmm. it can get really good. I mean, actually better mm -hmm. than when we were first it, married. It should be better every year because you know each other better. You go through a lot, you? though. Yeah, in you our, do. In our marriage, we went through a lot. Yeah. And... Um, but when I finally started catching on to what you're talking about, this, you know, courting her again, and then va seeing what she is for me, you know, the value that, that, that is there, then it started to open up to all kinds of joys that I hadn't experienced before, you know, when I was, we were just going through the motions. We're selfish beings. We are. And it's really hard to to conceptualize that unselfishness uh -huh. of that that is needed for any kind of healthy relationship. Right. It's it's a it's service that builds. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember mm -hmm. someone saying to me one time that marriage is taking two selfish creatures and teaching them to be unselfish. Mm -hmm. thought, wow, yeah, because, you know, two selfish beings, and mm -hmm. how can we be unselfish and think of the other one before ourselves, and what would make him happy? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that mm -hmm. thought really stuck with me. And mm -hmm. then kids come along, and it goes to another level of, of unselfishness. unselfishness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but so we yeah. had a dog, you know. There was something about we have this relationship that we know is firm. We have each other. And in life, there's not that many firm things. Mm -hmm. But with her, there was a firmness there. And then you have that, you kind of want to, you kind of want to love something else. Mm -hmm. You just kind of, you have that desire, you know. So we got a dog. <laughs> and we would bath that dog every week, and we would shampoo it and brush it, and it went everywhere with us, and it was like our Baby. Child. Yeah, that's our, our baby. dog child, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. My and father at one point he says, Other people have grandchildren, all I have is grand dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't the only sibling who did that. No. <laughs> no. I have well, he had one grandchild. Okay. Yeah. And so there's that that you know, when we have Christ, I think that's also a, a natural response to want to share mm -hmm. and and there's so many ways so many levels where this relationship is like a picture of a relationship with Christ Christ in this church mm -hmm. and that's that's really exciting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really exciting and it can continue to be so yes you right. know so as l we've got to keep that alive yeah yeah I just was thinking back to what Thad said a few minutes ago about keeping that you know, service helping to keep that relationship as a selfless mm. thing and, and seeing that from the perspective of our relationship with God. Mm. You know, I think that's really valuable, recognizing that that service to others binds our hearts closer to God because that's Him living mm -hmm. through us, mm. being able to bless them like the Liversage says, you know, it's not, it's not me talking to you, it's Jesus told mm -hmm. me to come and Mm -hmm. You know, so he's talking to you right now. He's just asked me to say the words, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and to think about it that way, that, that we have that right, that privilege to be a part of mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. Jesus wants to do in the lives of others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw an illustration one time with the sanctuary. You have the table of showbread and the altar of incense and the golden candlestick, mm -hmm. um, the Bible prayer and witnessing. Yes. And, 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 and to get to the most holy place, yes. and that, that's the next step. And so many Christians read the Bible and do prayer, and they don't witness, and right. they, they are unable to really access God huh. right. mm. because they're not, it's not, they're, it's all three, it takes all three. Right, mm. absolutely. Mm. And the growth. They're leaving a part of the relationship out. Mm. Mm. Right. And so in vain do they praise me and that kind mm -hmm. of things because mm. They're, they're not, it's not the whole 
whole act. So they think that they're righteous, but yet they have not ever entered the, mm-hmm. the most holy place because they're not sharing their light. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I think the chart, the chart that we have on our wall here, mm-hmm. clearly demonstrates that. The decline that. in giving. Yeah, the decline yes. in giving. Yes. The you know, we're, we're, a, we're a church that is rich in spiritual knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, we gorge on sermons, mm. but what are we doing about the things we are hearing? Yes. You know, reminds me when you say that, in vain do they praise me, in vain mm. do they worship me. Mm. Away from me, I never knew you. I mean, what a horrible thing to have said to you when you're mm. coming to the wedding, yeah. and Jesus says, I never knew you. Right. Away from me. Yeah, you don't right. have your garment. You don't mm-hmm. have the, the oil for your mm. lamp. you outer darkness. It, that's really hard. Yeah, and Christ was all about sharing. His whole mm-hmm. ministry was all about sharing. And if we were wearing His robe of righteousness, walking in His righteousness by faith, mm-hmm. that should flow through. And if we're not doing that kind of sharing, mm-hmm. then it's like the law. That doesn't, you know, the law is there to condemn us, mm-hmm. to show what we're doing wrong, mm-hmm. so that we can go to Christ mm-hmm. to get that forgiveness and that new life. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's an exciting package that Christ is offering us. Mm -hmm. And the good news, even if we've messed up, Mm -hmm. there is always hope for change. Yeah, that's a good thing. Always. I've I've never messed up in our relationship. I've never (laughs) messed up. Am I right? (laughs) I'm sorry I can't lie. (laughs) You've messed up and... A few times. A, a, a num- <laughs> number of times. She's trying Just to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and no. so have I. <laughs> That's the thing. And you, know? you give me forgiveness. Yeah. And you forgive me. Except for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a problem, you need to hold your tongue because we're out of time. Oh. <laughs> well, I just want to thank all of you for being yes. with us this evening and you too for sharing your joy and excitement and thank you to our viewers also for joining us this evening and i just want to challenge you to seek to love god in a way that shows your appreciation and your excitement for the upcoming wedding and your joy to be a part of the bride as well as part of those servants that jesus said in his parable were sent out to gather from the highways and byways and pray that we none of us would be those guests that refuse to put the wedding garment on Mm -hmm. or refuse to even come to the wedding feast because we had something more important. Oh, Lord, help us. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us not to be like that, but to be Mm -hmm. so excited for the wedding that we can't wait to put on the wedding garment and we can't wait to get our extra oil and we can't wait to see the bridegroom come. Mm -hmm. So I just want to just tell you how much we appreciate you watching and ask that you share with friends and and neighbors about Mission TV and maybe more people will learn to love God like we were talking about this evening and you know I learned a few things also so may God bless you until we see you next Monday night at 8 Eastern Time on the Mission TV Live 